Hello friends, today we will be discussing about CSP examination, which is the most important examination. CSP is Certified Safety Professional and ASP is Associate Safety Professional. This is the highest standard which any safety professional can get. This is actually known as the Golden Standard of Safety, Golden Standard of HSA. So this is very important certification and in this video we will be actually covering the various questions which CSP examination or ASP examination has asked in the past. So this series, mein, this series of videos we will cover karenge. actually ASP CSP examination ke previous yes, question papers ke mein hum cover karenge. We will also discuss about the answers. Ek -ek questions we will discuss karenge previous years. Ka. Also we will discuss the answers. Why this answer came? Why not this answer? So aapko actually the person, agar aap CSP ASP examination ka preparation kar hai, this video is enough for you. Okay. This video, what we will do is that we will make this as a series of video. Ye hum chota -chota bana ke, sara videos hum, we will release for you so that it will be interesting for you. Very long video means it is not interesting. So we will make it short. Okay. And next thing is that, see if you are preparing for the CSP ASP examination, this video is enough. And if you are not preparing, agar aap preparation nahi kar rahe, then also it is okay because CSP ASP preparation video agar aap dekhenge, to your knowledge will improve. Your knowledge will improve because the questions, the level of questions that the CSP ASP examination mein jo wala questions are highly technical. So if you are actually listening to these questions, what is the impact is that your knowledge will be improved. Aapka knowledge increase ho jayenge. So you will be becoming more competent. So definitely you can listen to this video even if you are not preparing for ASP CSP examination and just as in every video what I say these are our courses that we are offering we are also we also offer level 6 courses we also help for professional body membership aapko professional body memberships like grad IOSH and CM IOSH agar aapko membership milna hai tabhi bhi hum help karenge and also we have various safety courses these are all the safety courses that we are offering See if your friends want to do or if you want to do you can just message me in the whatsapp number that is given in the description. So let us now get into our safety training. So this is from 2017 environmental portion. The question is waste from a common industrial practice or manufacturing process would be listed on which of the following choices and the choices are A list, D list, K list and F list. So common industrial practice and manufacturing process is coming under which list? That is the question. The correct answer is F list. The correct answer is F list. The waste from common industrial practice or manufacturing process would be in F list. This is the correct answer. D is the correct answer. And we can go for the explanation. In the explanation it is clearly mentioned the various types of waste and which is coming in which list. The F list is actually for industrial and manufacturing process. F list is for industrial and manufacturing process. F list. And the K list is for uh, specific waste from various industries. D list is for actually non specified sources such as discarded chemical products. And A list includes specific waste from common sources such as pen cyanide solution from plastic operations. So the most important one that you have to remember is F list. Common industrial and manufacturing process comes in F list. That is the most important thing. Now the next question is from 2015 and this is from fall protection. The question is a self retracting fall arrest system offers the following advantage. Option is it does not have to be sent back to the manufacturer for inspection after a fall. No, this is we are talking about fall arrest system and that to self retracting and the first option is saying it does not have to be sent back to the manufacturer for inspection after a fall. I don't think that is correct answer. You also might be having the same opinion. The second one, it minimizes the amount of free fall distance a worker will experience in a fall. Yes, that is the correct answer because that is why we are using a fall arrest system which minimizes the distance of fall when a worker experiences a fall it minimizes the distance of fall then the third option is it is less expensive than a fall arrest system no it cannot be this option it is easier to attach to an anchor point so the correct answer is it minimizes the amount of free fall distance a worker will experience in a fall 
So this is the correct answer. It minimizes the amount of free fall distance a worker will experience in a fall. So B is the correct answer. Now let us get into the explanation. So this is the self retracting faller system is an actually a PPE personal protective equipment used to protect workers from falls. If it falls, the self-retracting self lifeline activates and stops the fall within a short distance. Yes, that is correct. That is how it works. It minimizes the amount of free fall distance a worker experiences. That was the answer. And howsoever, the self-retracting faller system still requires inspection. Yeah, that requires inspection and maintenance is also required. Then proper inspection and maintenance are necessary to ensure that the faller system is functioning properly. So this is the explanation for that. Okay, now we can go for the 2012 question. 2012, it is based upon radiation. And radiation, every time they are asking a question based upon radiation. It's very, very important topic. We will discuss mostly all the questions that is covered in radiation in this video series. We will discuss all the questions that is, that is previously asked. All the questions we will be going to discuss. So the question is, which type of radiation is likely to have greatest penetration into the body? So greatest penetration alpha, beta, gamma or free neutrons out of this, which one is having the greatest penetration? So greatest penetration alpha or beta or gamma, I think the correct answer is gamma because it is having the greatest penetration. Let us see how. Yes, the correct answer is gamma radiation is likely to have the greatest penetration into a body because alpha particles have mass. Alpha is the heaviest particle and can be stopped by a sheet of paper or an outer human skin can stop alpha particle because it is very heavy. Beta particles can penetrate slightly further than the alpha particles. See this one. Alpha can be stopped by a paper. Beta can be stopped by aluminum and gamma. It is very, very powerful. It penetrates through paper. It penetrates to aluminum. It pen can even only the lead. Lead can only stop it. So that much powerful it is gamma. It's the most penetrating of all the four types of radiation listed due to, and it is highly energetic electromagnetic nature and lack of mass so gamma is the most penetrating into the body you can remember this this uh, figure that is most important alpha beta and gamma alpha particles can be stopped by a paper beta by aluminium and gamma by lead so this is very very important picture that you can help to remember now the next question which type which uh, to which concept does the term double block and bleed refer so double block and bleed refer to which concept so this is from safety concepts portion and 2019 so this is the latest question 2019 means that is not so far away so this double block and bleed refers to which concept a very serious accident involving eye injury no that is not a lockout concept involving bulk storage tank safety yes i think so bleeding air pressure from a pneumatic lift a specific scientific experiment involving vision safety see double block and bleed it is actually an isolation concept double block and bleed that is actually used for tank while we are actually using while we are actually using to remove fluids from the tank or while doing maintenance activity and all we are using this to remove fluids from the tank so it should be the correct answer let us check yes the term double block and bleed typically refers to a lockout concept involving bulk storage tank safety in industries such as oil and gas petrochemicals and chemical processing that is involving bulk storage tank safety so the answer B is the correct answer. The lockout concept involving bulk storage tank safety. So it is actually used to isolate hazardous fluids in pipelines or vessels. Yes, this is used to isolate. It is a lockout concept. It involves two block valves is there and a bleed valve is there. So that is why the name double block and bleed. So that is creating a double barrier, double isolation it is creating. Two blocks are closed to create a double block preventing any fluid from passing through. A bleed valve is open to drain any fluid between the block valves ensuring that hazardous fluid is completely isolated. 
सो दिस इज द कॉन्सेप्ट ब्लीड वेल ब्लॉक वेल डबल ब्लॉक एंड ब्लीड सो दिस इज यूज टू एक्चुअली इट इज यूज इन ऑयल एंड गैस इंडस्ट्री टू प्रिवेंट द रिलीज ऑफ हजारिस मेटीरियल ड्यूरिंग मेंटेनेंस वर्क और इक्विपमेंट चेंजेस सो दिस इज द डबल ब्लॉक एंड ब्लीड अरेंजमेंट now the next question that was asked in 2018 and that is from environmental management this is also very recent question it has been asked in 2018 select the first step in preparing the shipping paper for transportation transporting a hazardous material so what is the first step in preparing the shipping paper for transporting a hazardous material so the option is determine the proper shipping name psn option b determine play carding requirements c determine if as if there are special shipping requirements for the material label the material container so these are the four options so what is the first step in preparing the shipping paper for transporting a hazardous material so the answer is determine the proper shipping name psn that is the correct answer so how that is the correct answer see the first step is to determine proper shipping name psn so what is this psn that is the first step in determining so that is the first step while you are actually shipping materials okay so psn is a standardized name that is a standardized name assigned to hazardous material based upon its chemical composition so whenever you are shipping any material you want to understand what kind of material you are sending so that is the hazardous material so the name of those hazardous materials is determined by psn it helps identify the material on shipping paper and ensure that it is handled and transported safely so it helps to identify what kind of material you are transporting so once the psn is determined then the next step is play carding requirements putting the card then sh special shipping requirements labeling etc is done but the first thing is to identify what kind of material you are transporting and that is done through psn that is proper shipping name now which the next question it is 2008 question that is an old question but still such questions are being asked that is why we have decided to put this question industrial hygiene this is from industrial hygiene mostly people actually don't revise this portion much so that is why we intentionally had given this topic which organization administers the designation of cih cih means certified industrial hygienist so which organization gives this designation is it bcsb bcsb means board of certified safety professional or abih see ih here it is there and ih here it is there so mostly it will be abih aiha or assc assc i think american society of safety engineers the correct answer is abih yes the guesswork was correct abih so what is this abih abih is an organization that administers the cih cih designation that is american board of industrial hygiene american board of industrial hygiene that is abih then it's an independent organization 1960 it was established it is widely recognized as a premium credential in the field of industrial hygiene and it is dedicated to promoting and protecting the health and safety of workers and the community by ensuring that certified industrial hygienist so this is the certified industrial hygienist that is the name they are giving that is the designation they are giving to the people have the necessary knowledge so they will be conducting certain kind of examinations and all and they evaluate and control hazards so that is very prestigious organization like csp like bcsp who are giving csp accreditation similarly abih is giving cih designation that is very important